So what I'm what I will do now is trace the gradient descent algorithm to find a regression line for some data. So let's assume we have some data. And I'm going to expand this a little bit. Let's assume we have some data in this Excel spreadsheet. I have here electric car speeds versus range. So at a certain speed, say 55 miles an hour, the range is 316 miles. At 75 miles an hour, that car speed is 227 miles an hour. Right? I'm going to call the speed X or the data and the range are going to be my target or my Y. This is what I want to predict. What I want to predict later is like if a car is going at 40 miles per hour, what range should I expect? That's the kind of predictions that I want to do. Now, we have seen that the formula for, um, for regression, uh, when we think of linear regression, we're thinking of a regression of a line, a straight line, that is of the type h of x is equal to theta 0 plus theta 1 times x. A straight line, a constant plus the slope times x. This is a straight line, that's what's called linear regression. Now, assuming that these values have some linearity to it, I should be able to find a regression that works here. To compute the regression, I need the learning rate, eta, right here, right? I need initial guesses, uh, initial guesses for the parameters theta zero and theta one. I'm gonna put them here, right? And then I should update the parameters according to the following formula. The next theta, theta zero, theta one, theta two, I is gonna have I is going to have those those indices zero one in this case I only have two thetas theta zero and theta one so I is going to be zero and then I is going to be one so to compute the new theta whatever I'm going to use the old value that I had for that theta minus the learning rate eta times one over m m is the number of data points that I have in this case I have six data points so it's going to be eta times 1 over 6. And then from 1 to 6, so for each one of these rows, I'm going to compute the equation of the straight line that I have right now. So I'm going to plug in the value for x at that row, in this case 55, 60, 65, 70, and so on. I'm going to plug the values for x at each row, and I'm going to subtract the target for that same row. So I'll plug 55 into the equation with the given thetas, and I will sub subtract 316, right? Then I'm going to plug in 60, and I'm going to subtract 292, and so on and so forth. And then I'm going to multiply that by the row in the corresponding column of the variable. So if I'm looking at theta 1, I'm going to look at each row of column one. Now, what happens with theta zero? We will just assume that there is a column zero here that I don't have. That is just the all the x's have the value one. OK, and that's how I will find the update for theta zero and for theta one. If you realize for theta zero, this x j i is one. So I might as well just take it out of the equation. So let's try to do this in Excel in a way that we can try and find this, right? So first, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put what this h of x uh, will be for each one of the columns. So I'll put it there, all right? So h of x1, right? I can, I can put the formula here. Let me see if I can, if I can show you the formula. That's the formula in Excel, but suffice to say that what I'm doing here for, um, for h of x1 is plugging that 55 right in this equation. So 50, it's going to be 55, this x, times, uh, I mean, 55 times theta 1 plus theta 0, okay? Because theta 0 is 0 and theta 1 is also 0, this stays, you know, um, this stays zero. Now, 
if I then after this I'm going to subtract these values I'm going to subtract these values uh, y from this value I'm going to do this h this equation minus the value here basically what I'm doing is this inside portion of the formula so there it is and you can see it's because all the ages are zero all the values here are the negative of these and then I'm going to multiply them by one for the case of, um, of theta zero well that's it and then I'm going to multiply it by the respective x's in the case of theta one so for theta one uh, I will need this term times 55 and then this term times 60 and so on and so forth and that's that's it that's what you get now <clears throat> we have seen how to compute the error the error is how far is this line from the actual ideal imaginary line that exists here or the best line that I can possibly find how far is it and the way to compute it is to do the average 1 over m of the sum of the equation minus y squared and I did that and that is the error that we obtain okay for this of course a huge error because this this is so off now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with some initial parameters that might make sense uh, to start with right just looking at roughly the values here right I can get an estimate of these parameters I could start from zero but it'll take me a long time um, to get to the actual um, to the actual values or maybe not but I'm gonna start with educated guesses for example 401 okay if I start with 400 as theta 0 and 1 for theta 1 you will see that if I plug in 400 here plus 1 times 55 I get 455 right now here's a, a, a an interesting thing and this will happen automatically with sufficient iterations but if these both these numbers are positive as the speed increases the range is going to increase but what we see here is that at the, as the speed increases the range is decreasing so maybe I'll just put negative one okay and I will start with these thetas so what happens now is I need to update the thetas here okay so the update of the thetas will be I'm gonna copy this formula now that I have all the terms it's gonna be the previous theta minus eta and I want to keep that fixed because it's always the same minus eta times and this is theta zero so it's going to be times this guy okay times this guy and then divided by six which is the amount of, of um, the amount of, um, of data that I have and then for this this eta over here for theta one for theta one not eta for theta one I'm gonna have the old theta one minus eta which is again oops minus eta which is fixed times now these guys because I need the x1s for here x1s divided by 6 okay so this is what I have so my new etas are going to be this well let's compute all these values for the new eta for the new thetas I'm sorry we see that the error is going smaller which is good and we can see this in our target values we start with 343 where we have 316 and we end with 317 where we have 207 so we can do one more iteration so I'm going to copy these values here my ADAs are changing a little bit and then I copy this over here and I see that the error keeps getting smaller so I'm going to do a bunch of these iterations okay a bunch of these iterations here um, I'm just going to do this 
a bunch of these iterations. Let's do, I don't know, these many iterations. That's fine. Okay. So now we look at an error of 49. After many iterations, the thetas that I get are 399.99, so basically 400, and negative 1.21. These thetas are the values that are best predicting my, um, my output so far. Now, when do I stop iterating? Well, you can see here the theta went from negative one or negative 1.19 to negative 1.21, so that's a difference of 0 0.02, right? Maybe when the difference is 0 0.0001 in the, in the change in ADAS, maybe that's when I stop, right? So I could be, I could continue this for a couple of, uh, for a couple more iterations, see what happens, right? So I can continue this for a couple more iterations, and I see that the error now is 29. And now the eta is moving by about 0 0.01, right? So very little, very little. So at one of these points, I'm going to stop. Iterating through this is very cheap in terms of computing power, but, if, but you have to know when to stop, when it's an acceptable error. So let's say if I take these values, 399 and negative 1.2, I get a decent approximation of this, right? Another thing I can do to approximate faster is to change the learning rate. So instead of 0 0.0001, I can do 0 0.0002. And we see that now I have an error with this many iterations, I have an error of 5.7. This is much closer, right? What if I do 0 0.0003? Even closer, I have almost no error here. Right? Very little error. And if I do 0 0.0005, well, I have almost no error. The error went from 0 0.04 to 0 0.02, right? So maybe I could have stopped even at this iteration that has a 0 0.07 error. That's, that's very acceptable. And you can see that the values here, 309, 301, 293, 283, 278, are somewhat close to what I'm looking for. Um, so this is how you will iterate and stop at some point. Once you find the thetas, for example, let's say the thetas are 399.9 and negative 1.52, okay? So I'm going to copy the formula here. The formula will be uh, theta, theta 1. Uh, let's see, where is this thing? theta 1 and theta 0, right? So if theta 1, if theta 0 is 399.99 and theta 1 is negative 1 1.5, that, that's approximately what it was. And let's say I want to find out what's the range if I go at 45 miles an hour. Well, all I have to do is theta 0 plus theta 1 times 45. And it should give me 332 um, miles, which kind of makes sense, right? Because it's less than 55. So, and this is how you use gradient descent to find out your thetas, your parameters, and then you use your, these parameters to predict a potential value.